Today is the first day <coughs> of the February 91 seven day retreat at Springwater. And we will talk, as we always do on the first day, about listening to a talk such as this, about authority, our relationship with each other. Not because it is my favorite topic, but because it is so important. Not just for someone who is here for the first time, but for all of us. To keep looking and listening afresh to how we're looking and listening. From one moment to the next, because we cannot assume because there is direct listening this moment that there will be direct listening in five minutes or in one minute. The mind switches so incredibly fast from direct listening and looking to thinking about what is being said. So, is it possible, humanly possible, not just to listen as we are used to, since we have learned language, to the meaning of the words, to listen intellectually, with knowledge of what we have heard before, and the comparison that goes with it and the criticism that goes with it, the agreement or disagreement. Just to listen openly. And not just listening openly, but with an open body and mind that is also looking at what is happening as the words are spoken. Inwardly. the wanting, the fearing, or rejection, acceptance, or becoming aware that one hasn't been listening at all, because there can be a sort of mechanical humming along, and yet thinking of something entirely different. Not that any of these ways of listening are to be condemned, to be suppressed, but just to become aware of it as it is happening without reaction, for or against. Is that possible? As we're sitting here in a large, spacious, bright room to feel reaction, to let it be, to be aware of it, to feel inattention as there is awareness of it, not to react against it, and listen in a way one knows not how. With an openness one knows not what it is,
unless such openness takes place every once in a while or for longer periods. To just remember what is being said. has rather little significance because we're already remembering so much. We may substitute one way of thinking for another. But that does not mean looking directly, inwardly, outwardly, with a mind that is open to find out to discover about itself and each other and the snow falling, the fog and the trees visible. We usually listen through the word, don't we? We look through the word, the knowledge, the description, this is this. I know trees. And therefore not really looking at this, what's there. Blinded by the word and what it is associated with the reactions which are instant wanting or not wanting. Liking or not liking. Can one discover these instant processes as one labels or as there is labeling of what it is seen and heard? Not I mustn't label so I can see directly. That's more thinking, which prevents the openness of, of not knowing what's there. And therefore, it comes into awareness as it is. And to see the instant labeling when it happens, the instant reaction of for or against, wanting more of it or not wanting it. Can that come into awareness for moments at a time, this whole process? And in this awareness there being no for or against, just wide open, Space. The one who judges, who sees, who reacts, can that one be seen, listened to, felt, as it emerges every moment of seeing and labeling and reacting? This whole feeling of meanness, separateness, in knowing, in reacting, in wanting or fearing. If that takes place every now and then, then it will also be clear that it's not important who is saying the words right now, who is talking and looking together with everyone and listening openly together with everyone. Not only that it is not important who it is that is speaking these words, giving the talk, but the danger of making something out of this person. Because 
because that prevents the openness of listening impartially and looking inwardly. Mind is busy creating an authority figure or an enemy, an adversary, someone to attack, someone to follow. When the mind is busy doing this, and of course the body f is in total connection with everything that thought does, supplying the feelings, the emotions, the sensations, to every thought and image and remembrance, inseparably interwoven. When that process is taking place of creating someone out of the spoken words, someone to follow or someone to fight, The mind is not in this relaxed state of no for or against, but the width and breadth of just being there. To receive, shall we say, to receive, to look, to find out, not to know, maybe to be confused. The reactions that come up, I shouldn't be confused. And with that, one has missed the next word that is said, the, a momentary openness closes up. I shouldn't be, I should be. Can that be seen as it happens? without this incredibly habitual judgment of right and wrong that is deeply programmed into each one of us to become aware of that program of judgment right and wrong like or dislike without judging the judgment at one point just listening to it as to the humming of the furnace. The breathing, sensations throughout the body. The incredible silence of snow falling. the particular format that exists for giving a talk. Someone sitting here with a microphone, sitting on a chair, which puts me at a higher level, most people sitting on the mat. Of course, I could also be, I used to sit on the mat. This is comfort not to elevate myself, but it needs to be said that it's not done for that because the mind unconsciously associates with position, with physical position, levels from old conditioning, higher and lower, lofty and not so lofty. The format that is given here may evoke instantly without a second thought, without any thought or noticeable thought, feeling of authority speaking. The 
authority of a teacher. Spiritual teacher. And maybe not just the format, there may be a, a yearning for having such a spiritual teacher as one's guide. one's comfort or refuge. And a real fear or anger, people tell me, anger coming up when that role is denied of being anyone's guide or spiritual teacher. The format cannot be denied, it's there. And we have discussed it in these 10 years of existing a lot. We're still doing it. People are bringing it up. That there's denial or massive denial of the fact that there is a teacher. People being blind to it, unaware of it. constructing themselves an artificial image of what they are, what I am. But I'm, I'm really seriously questioning whether one needs any image of each other as one is looking together and one person talks and looks and pauses. Of course, before jumping ahead and saying, do we need any image? We have to see the images that we have, that are there, that crop up, or are deeply lodged, maybe not instantly seen. So we're talking about this every, every retreat, because maybe talking about it, discussing it, wondering about it, being critical of what is being said, coming back and talking anew. All of this may loosen up this deep screen of, of unawareness that hides from us what the programs that we are automatically running on, that are automatically evoked by certain situations. to follow, to believe, to disbelieve, to fight, rather than opening up to the whole thing that is happening. With a mind that doesn't know how to respond because the energy is gathering in listening and looking what's there. We've always been open to suggestions for new format. That's why things change in the makeup of a retreat. We have then a new orientation on new ways of having meetings. This is also, we, 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 we did this with the meetings so people are not called up in whichever way they happen to sit at a time they may not wish to go to a meeting. So we can drop as much as possible any reminiscence of an authoritarian system that tells us what to do, which we're partly comfortable with. Because then we don't have to think for ourselves, take responsibility for ourselves, leave it to someone else. We haven't come up with any much different format for this talk. People can, of course, sit where they wish to and they don't have to come to the talk at all. They're, they're all tape. One can listen to a tape at a different time. But one can also look 
as a program may faintly reveal itself of putting authority on the person who is talking, wanting something of her, wanting to be told, or thinking one is being dogmatized and fighting that, to look at that, to question it, awe. Oh. Instantly or whenever it comes up again. This is what this white, spacious hall and hillside is for. To look openly without fear or resistance or to find the fear and resistance. As it were, for the first time, be in touch with it. Not say it shouldn't be. That's not me. What is this me? And you? All the pictures, right? All the, the wants. What one wants to be, what one wants someone else to be or not to be. One, what one has always thought one is. And not just one image, but collections of them. Remembrances. or unremembered remembrances. Vague feelings. Can it all be allowed to happen in the presence of no defense against it or the defense coming into awareness itself. Not knowing whether it's good or bad, whether it needs to be fight, fought. Not knowing, just open, listening, feeling, looking, being. without the pseudo-security of knowing who one is. Brain may be searching for that, for some kind of an identity. Can that be seen, caught? And nothing made of it, just the discovery of that searching who one is coming up with something, searching who or what the other person is, coming up with something, or the insecurity when one doesn't come up with something satisfactory, feeling at a loss, can all of that be felt? <clears throat> like a, a vast field of snow and footprints, and things sticking up through the cover. <clears throat> Nothing that is said or going to be said during this retreat, the talks, the meetings, is intentionally meant to persuade or influence or indoctrinate people. Although who knows, I may not be aware of doing it. And you're free to bring it to my attention if you feel that this is 
what is taking place and then we'll look at it again. A new, non-defensively, openly. Just recently someone said the you have such a strong or powerful personality and way of talking that it cannot help but that one cannot help but feel one is being persuaded. One has noticed that, so does one now go with the conviction that one is being persuaded because Tony talks with intensity or a lot of energy, has a strong personality, whatever that means. Or does one question whether one has to be persuaded by anyone, no matter how intense the language, the delivery, the personality? To question it. And then to look as one is in, in, in the presence and contact with this personality. Be it here in a talk or someone talking over television. In the papers. Or one's friends with strong opinions. We may have been brought up very deeply programmed to feel that we have to either accept something or reject something. Either fight it or follow it. We may believe that that's what we have to do. Because we have deep, deep, deeply conditioned beliefs what we, what we are supposed to do. I don't think there is much or any precedence in our life with our parents and elders, siblings, teachers, ministers, priests, masters. For being in the presence of someone, exposed to someone's talk, talking, preaching, speeching without fighting it or following it. What precedence is there for an open mind that doesn't know but is there listening? Vulnerably undefended? Oh, there's no precedence for that, is there? In none of our lives. So we can question that, that deep-seated belief that we have to do that, follow or fight. And because we're questioning, we'll notice we're fighting something, we're following it, defending it or, or whatever, finding allies to all who feel like we do, the comfort of that giving us good energy. We can question all of that. And, and wondering whether this is a dreamy utopian state, somebody talking of this possibility of being in the presence of someone talking with intensity, with what appears to be conviction, power of persuasion, and not being taken in and not fighting it, just listening and looking. so open that the openness of, of, of sky and earth is part of one. I hear someone saying, here you go again, talk about openness, but why don't you address the 
the stuffiness within that I feel. Stuffed with resistance or fear, anger. Where we can still wonder whether the, the stuffiness within the fear, one can't sort out all the ingredients, but if words, come there of fear or anxiety, anger, resistance, not wanting. Can that also come to the light? Without being resisted or met with more fear, or more anger, just listening to it, feeling it, not hemming it in with more resistance of, it shouldn't be like this, I should now feel wide and open. That's the danger of talking, giving a talk about wide, <coughs> wide openness at the moment that I feel crammed in. And then the mind going through what we just talked about. Comparing the openness to my closeness. And with the comparison, the evaluation of oneself. Being down on oneself, which is all mediated by thoughts about oneself. And the other maybe being down on the other too for creating this situation for me or feeling bad because I'm not what you're talking about. This all, can, this all can air out, can't it? Can it? We don't know what we're wondering. On this very bright, cool morning, Can fear or anger or resistance be more than labels? We don't know. Can the labels be dropped for a moment so one doesn't know what this is that is brewing? Enclosing, cramming. Be with it as it were with an unknown mass. Maybe mass is not the right word either, because it may have no mass. When the words fail, begin to fail one. when there is an, an entering into what seems like a solid mass of whatever. No longer calling it mass. No longer calling it anything. Just this, this openness of what is it? I don't know. What is it? Let me listen, feel. Touch. What's there? And careful not to be driven by the motive of trying to get rid of it. Because that motive brings inevitably a counter response of resistance. Defense.
can we approach ourselves and each other without trying to change each other, ourselves. Open to the motives that are of that nature, wanting to be rid of things, wanting to purify oneself, wanting the other one to be more open, less aggressive, loving, more loving. <coughs> it only happens if we become aware of these motives. If we're not aware of them, then they operate. Whatever is not in the brightness of awareness operates darkly, dimly. Not because this is bad, but it is so. It happens like that. It's discoverable. Not to believe it, but to, to, to question it, to find out for oneself. I'm not here to, to convey, parcel out beliefs, but to wonder together about what moves and unmoves one. What is, what is the stuckness we feel? The helplessness, impotence, whatever. What is it? Not it shouldn't be, it should be replaced, overcome, but what is it? And in this opening question of what is it, maybe unearthing some of these deeper motives of not wanting to be like that, not wanting to have that. Wanting. What is that? Several people since this war, this particular war, has been, has broken out. Is that what one says? Broken out? Yeah. Many people have mentioned a deeply felt dis-ease with the whole thing. <coughs> Fright. Anger. Pain, sadness, sorrow. And asked me, could I say something about all of that? What can one say? Can one look? A whole chain of reactions, one leading to another. Thinking about war, seeing on television, hearing about it. Fear. What, what is the fear? Is the fear, this may hit me too, eventually? Fear for one's friends, 
or fear for human beings, whether they may be under the flag of one's country or under a different flag. Is there fear for human beings? Feeling our combined pain? Our combined ignorance about what brings about this pain. Time and time again, this confronting each other as enemies, and then the immediate urge to do something about our intolerable situation. tolerable situation of no communication with love and care. There's none, is there? Or is there? Not on the global level. Because our, with our allies, we're also scheming, bribing. It's not real friendship that brings us together. Common interest brings us together and bribing with money, concessions or promises. And if one doesn't go along with all of that and sees through it somehow, somewhat, then this feeling of helplessness in the whole affair. And often people tell me rage coming up with this feeling of helplessness. Not being able to do something. To save the people, save the children, save the earth, the planet. Save it from what? from ourselves? What are we? What am I? What are my thought and habit processes with you, with, with each other on, on the most intimate of levels? How do we live together? wanting to change each other, do something about the other, or do something about myself. Or, first of all, discover about myself and you and our relationship. How we live together at work, at home, in this retreat, without talking. Can we watch it as, as more energy in a silent retreat than in our normal life to brighten up, to illumine what is going on? We can hear better the monologues and dialogues that go on in the mind, which so affect our whole physique with attraction or anger. I'm just listing few, please, I never mean only that. I can never say everything. So not to hear it as though this was what was exclusively going on. These are just examples. Anger or attraction, but there's multitudinous reactions going on in us. Very complex. But when this, this light of looking and listening is turned inwardly, a lot comes to, to the fore, is seen. 
It's, it, 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 we come upon it. A recent retreat, someone's telling me, seeing someone not working during, during the work period and s noticing visibly how the, the image is forming about this person who is not working and the next time running into the same person. Here's the one who didn't work. Either one takes it for the truth or one questions the whole thing so that it, there's more illumination of how we relate to each other on the basis of, of images which are based on speculation very often. Meager evidence or, or none. Or maybe a lot of evidence, but the person may not be like this the next moment. But the image sticks, doesn't it? This is the one who hurt me two years ago or yesterday. And not wanting to meet up with her or him. And in this absence of meeting each other, communicating with each other, more and more food for images. Delighting if someone else also feels this way about him or her. So the thing gets more massive all the time, the image. And the desire to do something. Retaliate. Teach him or her a lesson. Use force. Be rid of him or her so I can proceed more comfortably. If only he or she was out of my life, then peace would break out. That's how we think. I'm not saying we shouldn't think this way, but we should be aware of how we think. And in the awareness, no battle plan and not, not know what to do about it. Because it's just falling back on our blind habits that run us. To see whether one can live with spaciousness, with openness. Maybe if one labels it helplessness, then live with it, but wonder what it is not stuck to the label, because the label immediately brings rage about being helpless. And it may be a mislabel. Can we for a few days here see whether it's possible to live with whatever reveals itself? See the reactions, but not needing to go with them? questioning habitual reactions, whether they have to continue without suppression, technique, and also allow that feeling of maybe discomfort or uneasiness, insecurity to also be there, explored, Felt, not labeled. Label, labels are all right, but they're not the whole thing. The whole thing is something different. So in, in working like this, alone, together, in small groups, large groups, no groups, what is our relationship with each other?
Can it be one of friends exploring together? Feeling their way alone or together? Questioning each other? Oneself foremost in a silent retreat. Without leaving all images about that in suspense for the time being, one doesn't know what one really is. Maybe uh, saying, inquiring friends is also an image. Maybe we could say, we don't have to be anything in this, working together. <clears throat> Wondering about whatever image comes up, whether it's needed, helpful, or just begins to sort of solidify something that otherwise is in flux, in open flux. And obviously the open flux having its subterranean flows, which one may not be aware of, but one is alerted to the possibility and therefore gets glimpses. of the more disguised flows of habit, program, urge. And no need on this, until now, very safe hillside to do anything about anything except eating when we're hungry. The mouth watering the smell of peas, tofu, and mushroom. <laughs> Seeing what the imagery of food does to the mouth, or the smell, has already an image of it. And seeing oneself filling up with that good stuff. To see all of that. I want to say one word, one word about meetings that I did not think of last night. Due to previous conditionings and having meetings of this sort or something similar, one may, may feel one has to bring something to a meeting, bring something that I feel enthusiastic about, Try to please me. I just want to mention that you don't have to bring something to please me or make me feel enthusiastic. I'm not expecting. When you come in, we'll start with whatever's there. And people like to come in at times, just sit quietly. Don't feel you're wasting my time or you have to bring something up eventually to make a meeting worthwhile. Can one drop all of these ideas? I do use questions from meetings to, 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 to look further into during a talk. If you bring up something that you would definitely not want to be brought up in a talk, and when it's brought up, it's brought up, of, of course, anonymously. But if you feel, don't bring this up, then I won't. But over the years, people have felt that these thought, talks are meaningful to them. Uh, questions brought up out of this retreat as it evolves. Also, I am often reading more questions than we have time to go into, because people have said it's very helpful to hear these questions. I'm not the only one who has such questions. Which can, one can drop an image of being the only one who suffers like this or gets angry like this. So I'm doing that too. Which is a little bit hard because by the time I get around to write a question down, I do not remember it at all verbatim anymore. 
in several questions similar kind may have fused into one. So don't be surprised if your question sounds differently. I'm not trying to misquote you. But if you wish your question to be brought up the way you exactly formulated, then please write it down for me. That's very helpful to me. I don't have to labor trying to bring it back up out of memory. We're all in this together. There's no one standing or sitting or walking outside of it. We will end here for today.